Hello everyone, this is Tactical Edge here and welcome to another army build video. However, today we will be doing more of a unit focused than army build as we will be putting the spotlight on one unit only and that is Belaga Iron Hammer. Thanks to the suggestion of viewer Kurakuma is the best, we are showcasing the true king of Karak 8 peaks today. Now, as a DLC lord who has been with us since Warhammer 1, Belaga Iron Hammer is largely neglected in the multiplayer scene. Mostly, you only see, say, Grumbrindo, Rune Lord, and other Dawi Lords. Hell, even Ungrim and Forgrim has seen more action than our guy here. However, he is actually a formidable combatant and an unparalleled duelist, also with some pretty interesting and unique buffs to support his army. Now, we will be looking into his toolkit later. Now, let's go through the army builds and then see him in action. For the army builds, we have Belaga Iron Hammer with his Mighty Oath Stone and Revenge Incarnate, as well as Hammer of Angren. For the infantry, a front line of miners with blasting charges. At the back, a powerful missile core composed of rangers, three of them in the middle, Ulthor's Raiders, rangers with great weapons, also with marked by Ulthor to make your opponent more susceptible to missile damage. We ha also have a couple bolt throwers for that long range anti armor, anti large firepower. In the middle, Akron's Miners to provide some blasting charges once the enemy infantry has engaged our first line of infantry. At the back lines, to protect the flanks and rear, Slayers and also Iron Breakers. For the leadership support, we have Runesmith with Rune of Slowness, Rune of Speed and Rune of Wrath and Ruin. And also Master Engineer with Fiery Ring Authority and Smoke Bomb. As for the Norskan army, a pretty straightforward build here, trying to use that familiar warriors to charge into a first line, sunder their armor, and using the second line of Marauder Berserkers and their high weapon strength to punch through the Dawi infantry and go into the back lines. For the mobility, we have some Marauder horsemen here with throwing axes and Norskan warhounds. On the other far flank, we have some Norskan Ice Wolves. As for leadership, Wolfric the Wanderer coming in with Hunter of Champions, Sword of Torgold, his ship, and stand and fight. Wolfric the Wanderer on his chariot is a scary character to take down any infantry target. And that's basically it for the army builds. Let's see what Belagar is capable of. Can he take down Wolfric on his chariot? As the battle begins, the Norskin's only way to go is forward, charging into the um, Dawi melee line and trying to get into hand-to-hand -hand combat, as the both warriors are already unleashing their ammo into the Vermeer warriors, methodically picking them apart. Both warriors is actually a rather neglected form of artillery for the Dawi, usually overshadowed by the cannons, but with 124 missile strength, mostly armor piercing and also anti-large, they are actually very effective against anything large and armored, especially considering they only cost 550 gold. And as bolt throwers, they actually have higher firing rate and also precision than your gunpowder cannons. They are actually doing a significant damage to the familiar warriors. And now let's go into the frontline engagement as Wolfric charges into Belagar. But Belagar popping his mighty oath stone does not care. He has expert charge defense, having up to 84 melee defense for a moment, being debuffed now by Hunter of Champions. But still, 44 defense is still better than only having 20. Though Belagar's true strength lies in his offense, buffed up all the way to 110 melee attack. Powered by Vengeance with Revenge Incarnate and also Hammer of Angrin, he is beating back Wolfric's Assault, swinging his hammer, smashing apart his chariot, now with still half health left. Despite being the one getting charged by armor-piercing chariot anti-infantry damage, and with Wolfric being held back by Belagar and Hammer, the um, Ulthor's Raiders are able to chuck their throwing axes into the face of Wolfric, hacking him apart with that high missile strength and shattering him in a matter of mere seconds, eliminating the Lorskin leadership. However, now the familiar warriors has pushed their way into the back line, shutting down the rangers, disrupting the Dawi missile fire. Berserkers hacking apart these miners with blasting charges, who have expanded their explosives, but with the whole roots of the Hound unit tied on Belaga Iron Hammer, the Akron's miners are able to unleash their explosives into the Berserkers, obliterating the unit. Over here are some Norskin Ice Wolves trying to get into the backline to shut down the Rangers, but with the Ironbreakers flooding in, as well as being slowed down by the Flash Bomb, they are being trapped in melee combat against a very tanky opponent. 
On this flank, the Norskin has a little bit more success chopping on their way through these layers and now pushing into the backs, but the Ranger fire and also the success on the Dowies on the right flank in the middle, just holding back a bunch of Berserkers, whittling down these Marauder Berserkers as well, and the Familiar Warriors almost being uh, routed by all that point blank fire from maybe the boat throwers and whatnot. Yeah, their leadership is in no way holding, especially getting charged by Belagar, as their nearby Berserker allies are also on their last legs. And over here, Berserkers berserking, rampaging into the Dowie units. Still, with the close presence of some Iron Breakers here, Blasting Charges ready, they are not long for this world, as one volley of Blasting Charges can easily destroy these Glass Cannon units. But obviously, the Iron Breakers are taking their sweet time to aim. And right now, a whole volley of Blasting Charges going into the Marauder Berserkers, blasting Dowie and Norskins alike, but these Marauder Berserkers are wavering. At least they're... Leadership is dropping rapidly a second volley in and they are now negative leadership and with all that's left for the Norskins are some Marauder horsemen here Basically not enough ammo to shoot down all these Dowie infantry Familiar warriors fleeing and getting shot in the back by the boat throwers these Marauder berserkers also getting shot in the back That's basically it for the Norskins as army losses is hit the Dowies under the leadership of the true king of Karak eight peaks has won the day before we go into the rest of the video, I'd like to thank you for watching. I'm also currently working on a Chaos Heavy Cavalry build and will be uploading a video next week after doing a stream to test the Chaos build. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get notifications when I upload new content. I'm also looking for new ideas for new army builds and I want to know what you want to see. Feel free to drop a comment down below, tell me what units you want to see, you want me to showcase in the future, and any units will do. Anything you think that is underrated, underused, neglected, just send me a suggestion and I'll see what I can do with it. Now to the battle performances, as you can recall from the combat, it is not exactly a micro-intensive battle, just two simple armies clashing against each other. Belagar though, absolutely key in this engagement here, just tanking the damage from Wolfric the Wonder surprising him with his especially tanky stats and also surprisingly heavy counter punch. He just hits like a truck with that 110 attack and over 700 weapon strength thanks to that 60% base weapon damage buff from Revenge Incarnate and also some extra damage buff from Hammer of Angren. And with Belagar holding back Wolfric, these Oflars Raiders were able to dish out the damage against Wolfric the Wonder, especially he's on a chariot and also a larger target. The throwing axes really did a number on him, getting almost 2000 gold value on all the targets they were shooting at. Belagar himself not too shabby too, also getting 1300 gold from fighting Wolfric, beating back some Brutes of the Hounds and of course hacking away a couple of familiar warriors in the end. For the rest of the build, Master Engineer shooting away with his gun but not a lot of damage probably not having a good firing arc. Runesmith just there to cast some supporting spells. He did put down a Rune of Wrath and Ruin, but not a lot of damage against the Berserkers. Minus with Blasting Charges, not a lot of damage overall. Did some okay damage, but also getting hacked apart by the Berserkers, as they are still pretty chaffy as far as Dowie infantry goes. Akron's Miners getting almost 500 damage, and also pretty protected, well-preserved, Almost full unit is intact. Slayers tangled up by a bunch of Berserkers, trading extremely cost inefficiently. Although they did tie down the Berserkers long enough for the missile units to be secured and dish out some counter fire. Ironbreakers here almost fully intact, only losing a couple models probably and blocking away the Norskin Ice Wolves also using their blasting charges to clear out the remaining berserkers and whatnot just there as a reserve troop and didn't even see much action the ranged component though other than the Ophlers raiders the rangers are not exactly cost efficient here only this one earned back their value and the other just died heavily to the berserker rush and also famir is pushing into the back lines both throwers, they actually are, as I said, very cost efficient here, doing some pretty nice damage to pick up way the familiar warriors, this one earning 800 value. They are not a huge loss even if they are swarmed by enemy units, because they only cost 550, it's not exactly the most expensive loss you will take on the battlefield. 
As for the Norsecon army, Wolfric the Wonder earning only 800 value engaging against an infantry target, this is certainly not cost efficient for him. Berserker is not doing a whole tunnel of work here, mostly punching through a bunch of miners here. That only this one will earn back their worth. Brutes of the Hound getting blasted by the Ekron's miners as well, down to basically the last men. A pretty sad day for these Berserkers indeed. Marauder Horsemen not earning a lot of value as well as they do not have a good target to shoot at. Even if they get close and start shooting, the Rangers were able to counterfire to pick away their units and also HP. Norsecon Warhounds, I think they got forgotten in the back. They did feast it on some routing rangers though, so at least they got their bellies full, and most of them got out alive. Norsecon Ice Wolves getting intercepted by a bunch of Ironbreakers, not the best field date for them, and Familiar Warriors mostly picked apart by a bunch of missile troops and died a horrible death. Now, let's go into a more in-depth analysis on Belaga Iron Hammer and just talk about why he is such a formidable duelist and he is actually a very good Dowie Lord, just mostly overlooked. Now, you might think that on the Dwarf roster, there are a lot of good melee combatants, especially the Lord Department. We have Ungrim here, Grombrindo, and also Thorgrim. All of them are pretty good melee combatants. And that Belagar isn't as powerful as I made him sound like. However, all these characters here lack the same melee modifiers as Belagar. Yes, Ungrim has really good weapon strength, armor piercing, anti-large as well. Also have a lot of damage buffs to ramp up his weapon damage, but he does not have any universal attack buffs. The best he can do is get some bonus versus large via his item, and that's it. Facing a infantry character like the, that of Snikich, He's gonna get slaughtered, especially with this red ruin here debuffing his melee defense. Of Grombrindo, he has Grombrindo has no fear, but that's only one charge of plus 24 melee defense. Grombrindo does not have any hit chance modifiers. Especially after the loss of his smoke bomb, he can't really debuff his opponents anymore, so he'll have to rely on something else to buff up his damage and hit chance against his opponents. Thorgrim, yes, he does have. Oath of Vengeance to provide that 24 melee defense debuff to his enemy and also he has items and abilities, the Great Book of Grudges, to provide that consistent melee attack buff. But his attack stats is relatively low compared to everyone else and that it doesn't provide him with that damage burst, especially there's no weapon damage increase. While Belagar, he himself has access to damage increase, melee attack increase, from both Hammer of Angren and Revenge Incarnate. And he doesn't need any help, any assistance from anyone else, just him and his items and abilities alone, and he can reach a whopping 110 melee attack all by himself. That means that not only he can beat down his opponents, you can open yourself up to more tactical options. Normally, for other Dwarf Lords to win out in a duel against your opponent, you must buff them with Rune of Speed. That means you need to have at least one Runesmith in your army. You're losing out on tactical options. For example, you can't bring double Master Engineer. You can't bring a combination of Thane and a Master Engineer. You must have at least one Runesmith on the table. Or you can also bring Thoric. His Rune of Doom and Rune of Speed combined can be pretty powerful. But over here against the Skaven, it's pretty much suicide if you want Rune of Doom because you need Thoric on his toilet seat for that to happen. And an Envy of Doom in the Skaven's eyes is basically a static target for Jezails. The Belagar and Hammer, the true king of Karak Eight Peaks, does not have that kind of concern. He is a self-sufficient Dwarf Lord. He is a Dawi who brings his own buffs and items to the table. And here we have Belagar leading two flames into combat against Deathmaster Snikich. Snikich charging straight for Belagar and Hammer, but caught up on a Slayer, he turns around to face Belagar in combat, but Belagar is showing him who's the true boss here. One hit and he puts Snikich down to half HP, almost taking away 20% of his full HP. A second hit lands and put him down to 1300 HP, and a third hit down to 900 HP and Snikich is running. Snikich's physical resistance doesn't matter anymore here, as Belagar Iron Hammer's weapon strength has reached a ridiculous level, around 700. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you assassinate the assassins. 
Belagar himself barely got any scratches in this engagement, which might come in surprise to my opponent. As you might remember, he was engaging against an assassin and also Snickich, so he had a 34 melee defense debuff from Snickich's item and also assassin's trophy. The Mighty Oathstone really counteracted the defense debuffs while the Revenge Incarnate and also Hammer of Angren provided massive attack buff, overpowered the puny minus 24 melee attack from the Assassin's Trophy. Now other than the typical dwarf slowness and lack of mass being knocked over and whatnot, the only weakness of Belagar's melee is probably the lack of armor piercing. But that can be mitigated by one very convenient tool that the dwarves have which is the Rune of Breaking. Not exactly a popular rune, but for Belagard, it can pay dividends. That 25% weapon damage buff to Belagard can put his weapon strength up to about 800, and more importantly, it provides armor sundering. Minus 30 armor, which can ramp up his damage by a lot against any high armored targets, such as Sigvold the Magnificent. A secondary role that Belagard can fulfill is a buff bot. Over here, as the Vargas charges into melee combat, trashing the Dawei infantry, the Mighty Oath Stone providing that 24 melee defense helped them stabilize their losses and allow them to punch back while holding their ground. Mighty Oath Stone also provides nearby units with expert charge defense. However, with most of the infantry being either shielded and having charge defense against large or great weapons units who wants to charge your enemies, Dwarf infantry usually don't need it, with one exception, and that is miners. They are great weapon infantry but they never charges, having only blasting charges to mitigate the charges of their opponents. The 24 melee defense is a great help on their trash combat stats, and the expert charge defense allows them to hold out a little longer under enemy frontal charges. Belagar also has the ability rally to buff the leadership of the miners to keep them in the front line a little longer, buying time for the ranged units to dish out the damage. But honestly, this is a bit hard to pull off as it requires your opponent to charge straight into your miners with blasting charges taking the explosives head on. So Belagar here just returns to his primary role, which is a formidable duelist beating down the White King. To sum up, Belagar is a formidable duelist probably the most powerful among dwarves. Empowered by centuries of hate and grudging, holding the relic hammer of his clan, he can dispatch most characters like nobody's business. The other dwarf lords seem to have more fancy abilities with armor piercing, abilities to do big damage to monsters, or abilities to buff their army with high king and with great book of grudges or rune magic from Thoric, but only Belagar has the ability to go on foot and win against Snitch in a 1v1 combat. He is the king of Clan Angren, the rightful ruler to Karak 8 Peaks, and a formidable, unparalleled fighter among the Dawi roster. And that's basically it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. And also, if you have any thoughts and ideas about Belagar Iron Hammer, feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, don't hesitate to share your suggestion. Tell me what units you want me to feature in future army builds. Also, as an additional announcement, I got invited by Bowmore to participate in the promotion event for the new Anticity Ladder. For those who don't know, it is a competitive ranked system developed by Anticity hosted on Discord. You can access it through multiple YouTubers' server, I think Turin, Rubber Dog of War, as well as Anticity himself has access to it. And the system comes with a lot of impressive features. You basically play in the style as a standard tournament, basically a best of three, and you can keep track on your performances and scores with the system, while the whole ladder is also divided into multiple leagues, so you can match up with players more similar to your skill level. I'll be honest here, I'm not exactly the best competitive player around, so join me on the stream on Sunday, 19th of September, Watch my struggles on the ladder and witness whether I'll rise or fall, especially sometimes I might just bring a random wild army against my opponent. If you want to try out the ladder system, also feel free to stream snipe, I will be waiting. I'll schedule the stream on the channel and I'll see you when it begins. That's gonna be all for now and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Lich, signing out.